somewhere out there in the oceans and the mountains, there's a place where time stands still. A place where all outside forces become insignificant. Man has continued to push the limits of nature and his own ability in search of this place. Surfers have found it in the barrel of a breaking wave, a place they call the green room. The rap film crew takes you on a journey through winter in search of a place they call the white room. people think of California, they conjure up images of days on the beach. Few people initially think of mountains with so much snow, nothing can move. Rap came to Lake Tahoe to ski a few classic steep chutes. What we didn't expect was to be snowed in by the biggest snowstorm to hit the Sierras in a decade. Rap was here to film with Griff Davis, a Tahoe local, and legendary big air guy John Treeman. The word was out that Treeman could carve the hottest lines and catch unprecedented air. And Davis, this was his home turf. After a few days, the storm cleared off and left Squaw Valley buried in Sierra powder. Message for the 
Do you see the leaves that turn from gold to brown? Do you wonder why they die? In the distance you can see the pretty white. I saw the glow of With this last jump, we knew Treeman had it in him to pull off some big air, so John was destined to shoot again with us in another location. While vacationing in Utah earlier in the season, we came across a couple of ski bums by the names of Bill and Fred. They live at the base of Alta. Life for Bill and Fred is simple. They eat, sleep, and ski. These are ski bums in the true sense of the word, and they lucked out and picked the best season on record to make the Cottonwood Canyon their home. Ah! <laughs> we just start skiing? Uh, I started skiing about uh, eight years old. Skied for the first time in Sun Valley. Ski raced all through high school and uh, as soon as I got out of high school, spent a year in college in Boise, and then went to Colorado for four years. And uh, got out of there this year to come to the Utah Powder that seems to be stacking up so well this year. <laughs> what do you like about skiing? What's, why are you a skier? Why did you get into banking or something like that? The reason I like skiing is because you can live in the safety bubble. The safety bubbles, the town of Alta, or the other many ski towns out there, where you can invade everything else and just ski all day and ignore the rest of the world. There is no pattern. 
The other side of the Cottonwood Canyon from Snowbird and Alta is a backcountry mecca called Mount Superior. This is where the real insanity was happening. Another Utah local by the name of Ox took the three hour hike to the top along with Sean Farmer to make first tracks down the wildest lines on this mountain. Ox picked a line off the top. After hiking all that way, he wanted to try something that no one else had ever done before. His plan? traverse into a steep 45 degree face and drop the huge cliff band at the bottom. saw Farmer standing above a chute that Ox had pointed out to him earlier that day. It was about a thousand feet long, ridiculously steep, and only about eight feet wide. People had been down this chute before, but Farmer said if he was going to do it, he was going to do it his way. Straight line it. And when he dropped in, we didn't know what to expect. We left Utah and worked our way north to Canada. There's a snow belt in the southeast corner of British Columbia where deep powder skiing occurs on a regular basis. We came here to Island Lake Lodge for an affordable alternative to helicopter skiing. Cat skiing. Meet Martin Bouillon. Snowboarders Mark Castingay, Greg Todds, and skier Kirk Jensen.
If you want to get from one town to the next in Europe, it always looks very direct on the map. What you don't realize is that there are about 800 turns the map doesn't show. This is exactly the scenario when traveling between Chamonix, France, and Verbier, Switzerland. We were traveling with Canadian Kirk Jensen from Lake Louise and John Treeman. The Kirk's gonna get air tomorrow too. I have to get air, otherwise <laughs> Freebird will just show me down. <laughs> you might as well call him one Did you get air today? Got a little air today. How much air did you get today? Uh, it's hard to say. Hard to say. 60 or so. 60 or so? 60 or 70. You haven't shaved your lip yet? Haven't shaved my lip. Get a zoom on that lip. This will be the third time rap is filmed in Verbier. And there's a good reason why. This mountain boasts the second highest vertical drop in the world. The other unique thing about filming in Verbier is the age of their off-piece tour guide. Who would expect an 11-year-old kid could show us some of the best steep lines on the mountain? Meet Carl Cooper. I like racing, but, but I'd rather the ski steeps. The are a lot better. Massive better. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. We should see fire. 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. We have tremendous flame out there. All engines. And we have lift off. She's rising. She's yawing now to clear the tower. That flight yaw. Now the huge tail is passing the tower. She's lifting up. We have power clear. We have power clear. We're beginning to feel the first thunderous roar. I can see her rising now. And she's going up straight into the roll program, which she should be completing. We should expect to hear from the astronauts as this bit of land is beginning to shake with the power of it. The power of it as goes to its like this of cloud. Sure thing does come from out of space.
When you're doing verbiage, you get uh, any big air? Uh, not huge air. Moderate air. What's moderate air? Uh, 50, over 50 feet is pretty moderate, I think. If you're getting over 50 feet, I mean, it's a pretty good jump. There really wasn't any contest when it came to see who would get the biggest air of the trip. down the road looking for resorts that had what we needed. And what we needed, we found in France. Val d'Isère. It's been a ski town for almost a century and still considered a must on anyone's list. The recent Olympics had gifted Val d'Isère with a train called a funicular that lifted you into the 21st century and released you on top of the Alps. By the time we reached Val d'Isère, Treeman had gained our respect for being a big airman. Tahoe was his own turf, so he knew where to jump and where the sweet spots were. In Verbier, he mastered the biggest air the locals had ever seen. Val d'Isère offered a new challenge. The landings were not as steep, and the last storm was a few days ago, so the snow was beginning to firm up. But it was deep. If it's deep, 
And if it's soft and if you don't hit any rocks, you're set. From Val d'Isere, we moved on to the Alberg region in the western tip of Austria. This is where you will find the ski towns of St. Anton, Lech, and Sur. We came here for three reasons. The legendary Alberg snow, the cliffs, and the marketing director invited us. got to St. Anton, we met up with three snowboarders and photographer Scott Road. This is Tommy Brunner of Innsbruck. Ox from Salt Lake. Dieter Happ, world champion snowboarder from Austria.
What do skiers do when they can't ski? Mountain bike. And Crested Butte, Colorado is single track heaven. No other gravity sport parallels the experience and the rush of skiing more than mountain biking. Someone told us stories about one of the greatest ski pubs in America. We were told that it was on a big mountain in Montana, near a town called Whitefish. For this trip, we knew we had to bring along some serious beer drinkers, who could also ski, and we knew the perfect man for the job. Rap film crew member, Bob Coakley. Also along for the party, from Bob's hometown of Park City, Utah, Sue Knudsen. And from Tahoe, California, Jason Schatz.
After the powder in Utah and California earlier this year, we thought that we had already gotten our fair share. What we didn't expect was to ski the lightest, driest snow that we had seen in five years. While everywhere else in America, people were talking about the season of the decade, the folks from around here were acting like this is what it's like every year. This is Three Feet of Fresh at Big Mountain, Montana. Moran, U.S. ski team, mogul specialist, born in New Jersey, skied out to Vermont, moved to Colorado, shredding the pile bumps, now never leave. Bye. Trace, you are, uh, how do we say, a real handsome guy. You know, tell us about yourself, tell us about, you know, your handsomeness and how it works for you. Well, basically, you know, everyone's like, you know, skiing's really important. To, it's really important to do well in skiing, you know, really important to catch big air and stuff like that. That's not it, man. No. It's looks. It's looks. It's looks. The camera's on. It's looks, you know? You gotta look good, damn it, you know? So what you're trying to say is you, you will ski into a bump, have someone like Jim Craig or myself hit the air, perform the, the radical maneuver, stunt do the landing, and you ski away? Yeah, stunt doubles. I like, I like that. I, That's... I just want to look good. I'm out there to look good, you know? I mean, chicks, aren't gonna, chicks don't want you for your skiing. Chicks like you because you look good out there, you know?
right on. The guy's, the guy's a gun. We like the guy, Trace. Trace, you're handsome. Don't, Trace, yeah. you're handsome. Don't how do forget I, How do I look, dude? You look pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Just when we thought we had found the white room, we found ourselves wanting more. Something bigger, more remote, more elusive and undiscovered. We knew a place to find all this and headed way north. To Alaska. Of course, we had to find some real Alaskans to show us this place. So we recruited skiers John and Jim Goot from Juneau and snowboarder Darren Mattingly from Anchorage. And from back home in Park City, we brought along our old pal Sue Knudsen, newcomer Andy Coe, and Jim Conway. Believe it or not, there are ski resorts in Alaska, and our first stop, just one hour out of Anchorage, was Alaska Resort. This place looked more like a heli-skiing operation with lifts than a conventional ski resort. One thing that you can pretty much count on in Alaska is lots of snow. We just came from an all-time season in the lower 48 to this. But this is what the locals here call normal. This ski resort had a little different look than most we had been to which is probably why more and more people are making the trek to Alaska. You are my After enjoying the comforts of the five-star resort, we decided to try Alaska with a different twist. While we were in Alaska, Trevor Peterson and Eric Peyota set up camp on a glacier near the town of Valdez and were on their own recon mission, looking for the unskied peaks that this place is known for. A 15-minute heli lift from Valdez put us right here where we set up camp for a week of adventure skiing. The possibilities for first descents here were endless in all directions, and as long as the weather held, we knew we would find what we came for. 
We also brought Sue and Andy over from Alyeska, but our first mission was to see what Trevor and Eric had cooked up for themselves. They wanted to pick out a few choice peaks before we did anything else. And with the help of our helicopter pilot, Chet, they scoped out a few lines that needed to be skied. The first line started with a massive snow and ice field, leading into a 50 degree bridge of ice that we named the Tongue. With 200 foot vertical blue ice walls on either side and a river of snow making its way down the center of the Tongue, this was one of the most spectacular places we had ever seen in the Chugash Mountains. Next on the menu was an unnamed 6,000 foot chunk of rock and snow. The mountains around Valdez are becoming a hotbed for skiers and snowboarders who are looking for adventure. Trevor and Eric have earned the respect of other extremists for their understanding and respect for this type of terrain and conditions. With a forecast of sun for the next few days, we picked up Sue and Andy and got Chet to drop us off on an assortment of peaks around Valdez. Our winter camping heli-skiing adventure was starting to take shape nicely.
So what do you think of Alaska, Nick? I love Alaska. It's my home away from home. Well, why is that? If you come to Alaska for 20 bucks, you get 5,000 feet of bird. You can ride the best mountains in the world, the deepest snow, the biggest cliffs, anything you want. I do your fingertips. To give you even a better understanding of what this place is all about, we drop Nick Parada and world champion Michelle Taggart off on top of a run that most people could only dream of. 5,000 feet of vertical, top to bottom. No stops. After an extended winter in Alaska, we still weren't quite ready to face the city. We wanted to find the roots of the White Room, and for this, we decided to head way south. Far from the maddening crowd in the southern hemisphere, there are a group of islands where thoughts of stoplights, traffic jams, and office towers evaporate in the hot Pacific wind. This is Tahiti, a French Polynesian paradise, a place to hit on any surfer's wish list. We came to these islands with a new breed of surfers that are redefining what a surfer can do with a wave. Kelly Slater, current world champion, an American from Florida. Tom Carroll, an Australian that has been world champion many times over. Jeff Booth. Is it safe? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
your groove kicks down. You lay all your groove kicks down. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just doesn't make sense. We travel all over the world looking for some place they call the White Room. I mean, who are we trying to kid? Is there really such a place? And if we found it, what would we do when we got there? Oh well, I guess maybe we'll just have to keep on looking.